What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Most days we're bringing you up to the minute news on phones, tablets, and gaming. Today though, we've got something special. We are in Tustin, California at the Aeroscraft Hangar taking a look at what the company is hoping is the future. This is their LTA or lighter than air airship, Zeppelin, whatever you want to call it, but make sure you call it the future. The company is hoping this is going to have tremendous civilian, military, and government applications as a way to get aid to places where helicopters and planes can't get to and land. We just got a tremendous tour of the airship and we got some technical information. Let me walk you guys through what this is and what you might see out your window over the next few years. Why I do believe that this is a, a historical moment in aviation history and why this is a unique vehicle is basically because uh, as you said, and as I told you before, this is literally a flying submarine and it's never been proven before. So uh, in one hand you have airships which are pressurized balloons basically, full of helium that use that, that lightness of the helium to lift the weight. And then on, on the other side you have the back history of the Hindenburg which is a, which is a rigid air, uh, airship. So this vehicle it's combining uh, the airship world with the rigid structure of the past and bring in the technologies of the submarines, which allows to compress and decompress uh, helium to control the buoyancy. Well, let's say you have a, a bag, a plastic bag full yeah. of air, full of air in front of you, and you suck the air inside of it. So now the air goes into your lungs. This is what we do when we compress, right? We put that into lungs. This goes into this machine, in the, into this envelope. Okay. Now the bag, the bag goes like smaller like that, right? Collapses. Yeah. But this, this aircraft cannot collapse because it's rigid, right? It's a rigid thing. So what we do is we have this wide airbag has to, has to get, the air has to get in. And that is actually this, what you see here, the wide bags that you see here, those are like the key technologies because it's not about how much you can compress, but it's about the air that you can put in. Like in a submarine, it's yeah. not about, it's about the water that can get into the tanks to make it go down. That's all right, so it's the same thing. So actually the key point is trying to get as much air as you can yeah. into this bag to make the aircraft heavy. And then when you release, the helium releases, expands, and pushes the air out the bag. And now you have less air, you have more helium, you become more light. The problem is like, it's never been feasible from the engineering point of view. Always when you talk about compression and decompression, you talk about like rigid metallic cylinders, way too heavy for any aircraft yeah. to, to even Think about the, the, the math on that. This vehicle here is 270 feet long, uh, 100 feet uh, tall and 75 feet wide. Its envelope volume is roughly 700,000 cubic feet. The dry, the dry weight of this vehicle with no, ga uh, no helium in it weighs roughly 36,000 pounds. It's a multi-layered uh, fabric. There's, there's a couple different materials on this aircraft on the outside. The uh, main one that you see there is the silver shiny stuff. That is uh, well, seven layers of uh, fabrics and then you've got helium barriers, UV protection, and uh, other, other stuff that we're incorporating in this for testing. This, this vehicle is going to solve a, a big niche that we have in the market today of getting to locations around the world that aren't accessible right now or you need to build the runways, uh, landing systems, stuff like this. This vehicle could fly in, it's got vertical takeoff at full maximum payload. That means we can just offload the payload directly down. We don't even have to land. We could hover the vehicle, offload it directly down and then just take off and return to the destination. From the engineering perspective, we see plenty of applications because we know what's the uh, capability. The capability of this vehicle is heavy cargo transportation. So when you think about cargo transportation, you are not limited to anything. What do you want to transport will be able to transport it. Now what I see is uh, unlimited uses depending on our society needs. Uh, for instance, uh, somebody brought up uh, the idea of FedEx being maybe interested in that because they handle a lot of the mail in this planet. And this is such a good idea. Me, from the engineering perspective, I wasn't thinking about that. I think more of a, I would say more of a social uh, benefit. I'm thinking about uh, fire fighting, like a, instead of, especially here in California where we have uh, fires in, during summer, very, very damaging. Instead of having like 16 helicopters going back and forth to the sea, picking up the water and doing that, you have uh, 60 tons of water or retardant 
that can be dropped in one spot very slowly. You don't have to go fly away. You have to, you can, you can choose your target perfectly. So, you know, firefighters, uh, I mean, fire, then we have uh, like in the wind industry or the pipe industry where you want to build windmill farms or when you want to bring the oil from Alaska and you don't have the ground infrastructure to take your trucks with, the, with whatever you have to build. You have something big enough that transport enough weight that doesn't need the infrastructure on the ground. You don't have to build the roads for the actual construction to happen. So you can do the deliveries in a very, very efficient way. For instance, this one goes down and up, right? So, so I can go this up like that, right? Make sure that it's not touching. And then I go here and I go like this. That's okay. And I can, and I can be, you know, if my aircraft has to be flying this way, I can be targeting, you know, I'm following yeah. someone, a vehicle, or I'm, I'm like trying to deliver something towards this side. And I'm, what, I'm what looking this way. Th those are exactly yeah. actually the advantages. Like you can, you can have no limited view around you, whether, whether the aircraft has to be pointing to some direction or not. Like you have an advantage on that. Now, after, after you see my enthusiasm, you understand why I say that this is a, this is truly a historical moment because even if it's not something major, still is, still is a little dot on the aviation history because nobody has ever done something like that. And we're trying actually, we're not trying to, to take anyone out of business because all what exists already, it does what it's supposed to do and it serves a purpose. It's just there's a gap that nobody has been yeah. able to fill. And this is what we're doing, is filling the gap of, of being cheap at the same time as getting a lot of cargo up, which nobody can do. Yeah. Because an aircraft has to have, you know, has to have a huge rail, you know, like runway to, to land and all that. So you can, you can have aircraft that can lift a lot of weight. But can you lift a lot of weight and at the same time be hovering at the same time? You can't. Very important for this vehicle, it's, uh, the fact that it can take off vertically and, you know, vertical takeoff and landing is a, is a key point in this vehicle. The fact that people sometimes don't pay too much attention to that and that they should is because one of the major problems that, for instance, today as this vehicle has been uh, sponsored by the military, from a military point of view, you are restricted where you, where you go and you're restricted to where you can land. So having this vehicle being able to hover or not even, not even doesn't have to do any, it doesn't have to have any infrastructure in the ground, keeps all the doors open. For delivery for the US military, it's like completely unlimited. Especially when we're talking about like countries like Afghanistan with a, a very complicated orography on the terrain. And if you don't want to have a specific target on the ground, which is your airport, where, where's, where's your aircraft is going to go, then this vehicle is a total solution. So we've had a lot of incredible opportunities at Techno Buffalo. We've interviewed heads of companies and taken a look at some of the most cutting edge products the world has to offer. This though, today at the Aircraft Hangar, might take the cake as one of the most incredible things that we've seen. I hope that the video displays the scale and the technology of this airship and what went into it. It is an absolutely incredible experience to be in that cockpit, stand outside the hangar and see the size, see the scope and hear the application. Uh, we really might be looking at the future of transport and the future of hopefully getting care to those that need it in places where airplanes or helicopters are unable to land. Hope you guys enjoyed this really uh, incredible tour of the aircraft behind me. Thank you to the aircraft people. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo and I'll see you guys in the next video. You know, it's, it's an old idea, but it takes a lot of imagination and a lot of, you know, uh, I would say like brainstorming to make things happen and make it look like it's a simple way. You know how they say, like, all, all, they, they always say that in science and, and engineering, they say the simple stuff is the, is the most beautiful one, is the one that really shows, you know, how successful the idea could be.